Good afternoon, everybody. I hope you all can hear me. My name is Jeff Pollock. I'm the Marketing Communications Manager for NASDAQ Source One. I wanted to welcome you, all, welcome you all to our Color Your World Sweet Space webinar, Water-Based Inks 101. We'll go ahead and begin the presentation now. Today we have Rob Coleman of NASDAQ Source One and Jeanette Hardy of MagnaColors who will be discussing the different available water-based technologies and how they can create new profit centers for your printing business. This webinar is roughly an hour long, including a question and answer session, and some of the deeper subjects that Rob and Jeanette will be reviewing include why and when printers should use water-based inks, an overview of water-based ink chemistry in the MagnaPrints inks line, as well as general water-based and discharge printing tips. As, as we go along, uh, please type your questions into the on-screen GoToWebinar control panel, and we'll collect and answer those questions during the Q&A section at the end of the webinar. The webinar is being recorded, and a link to the recording and the presentation materials will be provided to all registrants attending the webinar or not tomorrow. So before we start, I'd like to remind all of the attendees to register for our Color Your World sweepstakes. Uh, Magna Colors and NASDAQ Source One are sending two winners on an expenses paid trip to FESPA 2013 in London this June 25th through 29th. As registered attendees of this webinar, you will be receiving bonus entries. So please make sure you visit Source One nasdar.com slash color your world and enter today to win this very exciting trip. So without further ado, I'm going to turn control of the webinar over to Rob Coleman and Jeanette Hardy. Rob, take it away. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. One second and let me get the uh, presentation up and we should be good to go. All righty. I hope everybody can see my screen. Um, myself and Jeanette cannot see the ch chat readily, so if you have um, uh, any problems or questions, make sure you put it in and Jeff will help you out on that. Uh, we'd like to welcome everybody. We really appreciate taking the time today. Uh, our goals here are that we can uh, present WaterBase and MagnaColor in particular to you in a uh, very informational uh, fashion so that you can walk out of here with a much better understanding of the processes and the products. Again, my name is Rob Coleman. I basically handle the product management responsibilities for NASDAQ Source One for all of the textile screen inks. I'm joined by Jeanette Hardy. She is the sales director of Magna Colors based out of the UK. As a matter of fact, that's where she is now. So we are uh, having a global webinar here. So it, I hope it's, uh, you get a lot out of it. And please feel free to ask your questions. We hope to address them all at the end. Uh, we're going to be kind of going back and forth a little bit on the slides, so you know if you start to get a little sleepy with maybe my southern drawl, then we'll get uh, Jeanette's. Um, excuse me, we will get Jeanette's uh, nice British accent to wake everybody up. So really look forward to doing this, and uh, thank you very much for joining us. I'd like to start out just briefly for a few minutes, just to let you know who Source One and who MagnaColor uh, uh, companies are, and then we will dive right into it. Many of you may be familiar with. Source One. Let me see if I can get this. There we go. We, uh, uh, of course, have been we're, uh, part of the NASDAQ company. We are founded way back in 1922. We are the largest distributor to all of the Americas, and we serve a number of different industries, including the garment industry, of which we are all in. But we are more than ink. We are uh, screen supplies. We sell media, equipment, software, and service. And as it relates to this presentation uh, and the Magnet Colors products, we are the master distributor in all of North America for the MagnaColor products. Uh, you know, we have a geographic footprint across the United States and uh, Central America that really allows us to service your needs. These are our locations here in the United States. You can see we cover you know, a good, good portion of the United States in our uh, distribution areas. We expand down into Mexico with numerous locations as well as Guatemala and Honduras. This really brings us a unique opportunity to service those customers that have both domestic United States uh, locations as well as down offshore that we can handle across one company all of your product needs. So it, uh, uh, it truly is probably, you know, not probably is the most uh, largest geographic footprint of any distributor in all of the Americas. That's a quick overview of who we are. Now what I'd like to do is just turn the vocals over to uh, Jeanette. I'll still be working the slides to show, so Jeanette, uh, please let me know if I'm short on a slide. But Magna Colors is, is based out of the UK, and we'll let Jeanette give you a brief uh, overview on Magna. Okay, thank you, Rob, and um, hello, everyone. As Rob said, I am the sales director for Magna Colors. Um, 
as a company, we were established in 1978, and we have always been involved in water-based printing products. Before we started in screen printing, we supplied the UK market uh, for printing products in the continuous printing market. So that's on the rotary printing or roll-to-roll, -roll, I think you refer to it as, in America. We are still today the biggest supplier in the UK of water-based printing to the continuous market. And approximately 10 years ago, um, we expanded our product line into screen printing as there became uh, more of a demand for water-based products onto the t-shirts and the garment market. Because we've always been a water-based company, we've never been involved with PVC or phthalates, and therefore all our developments are always water-based and have always been the most environmentally friendly products available. Um, now we are much more focused on the screen printing side of things and we developed the Magna print range especially for the screen printing and apparel industry. We're going to talk a lot more about the ranges as we go into the, the seminar but basically the range consists of soft bases that you print on white or light garment um, colors and high solid bases which are suitable for both light and dark garments. We'll talk a lot more about the high solids as we go into this. Um, we also have an extensive range of speciality inks which are ready to print inks that give effects like puff paste or foil adhesives. And the product that we are probably the most well known for throughout the world is our formaldehyde free discharge system which we patented around 12 years ago um, and so that was a, a very innovative product because it was the first in the world and we still own the patent for that product uh, throughout North America, Europe um, and um, a few other places in the world. Um, the Magna Print range is slightly different to what you're used to in that all our bases don't have any color in them. They come as neutral or white and we have one set of pigments that are used across the full range. Okay, Rob, if you want to move on to the next slide. So just to give you a little bit of background as to why we've developed our products the way that we have done and how our market has developed for water-based ink. Being based in Europe, obviously we have very different legislation um, than you have in America and we have a lot of chemicals that are banned over here that are still widely available in the Americas. The other thing that we have over here is big environmental campaigners, particularly people such as Greenpeace and lots of organic labeling schemes who put a lot of pressure onto the European retailers to make sure that the garments or anything that they produce is an, as environmentally friendly as possible. This meant that um, as long ago as 2005, products such as PVC, phthalates, formaldehyde, APO and heavy metals were banned by a lot of the European retailers. And so with printing, you weren't allowed to use any inks that contained any of those products. So really, since 2005, Magna Colors have had a product range that was free from all those chemicals. I know now that in America, people like Nike are insisting on PVC-free. Well, in Europe, a lot of the retailers, and, and even Nike, have been PVC-free in Europe since 2005. The other thing that we also pride ourselves on, because we are very environmentally friendly, um, we do certify our inks to meet certain global standards that are recognized throughout the garment industry. Urquitex 100 um, is um, a recognized labeling scheme for garments and essentially it means that the garments are as kind to the human body and skin as they possibly can be. So every year we certify our products to say that they are suitable for use on these garments they are also approved by GOTS, which is the Global Organic Textile Standard. So you can use our inks on organic garments. 
and we also certify our inks to the Nike RSL and we are an approved vendor to Nike. So one of the uh, important things is, is really why should I use water-based inks? Well, I think I've covered a lot of that uh, by saying, you know, there is an environmental demand now and you guys are starting to see a demand from people like Nike and other retailers will follow suit on that. And I've heard today that Walmart are now demanding PVC-free um, screen printing inks. So it's very important that you know you start to look at these kind of inks going forward. One of the other um, things that we get asked for water-based a lot is not just the environmental side of it, but the hand feel. For instance, a lot of our customers that moved to water-based for a retailer demand suddenly realized that actually the prints that they were getting were much softer, they saw a benefit from actually using these inks and have been able to grow the use of water base purely on, on the hand feel of the garment. Another benefit is that the print is really in the garment and you can iron it. It's not like a plasticol, it won't stick to the, the iron. So that makes a real big difference. And also it is actually really cost effective. It's a very cost-effective solution, particularly now that um, phthalate-free inks, you, you know, the minimum requirement now in America is phthalate-free, and the inks have increased in price because of that. PVC-free plastisol as an alternative to water-based is very, very expensive, and water-based is very, very cost-efficient. One of the questions I get asked a lot is, will I be able to produce to the same speed that I can produce with plastisol? And the answer to that question is, is yes. Um, there are slight processing differences which we'll talk about, but in general all our customers are very happy with the productivity levels that they're able to maintain with water-based. Um, another benefit is you don't need to clean with solvents. You know, you can clean the ink from the screen very easily, very quickly with water. And there's a huge cost saving in that, not just in cleaning but also in disposal of those solvents because I don't know what it's like in America but particularly in Europe it's very very expensive to dispose of solvents that you've used in cleaning screens so it's a very very cost-effective solution and we also believe that by having blank bases and one set of pigments that you use across every base that's another very cost-effective system and it reduces the stock that you're holding of colors and bases so it is very, very cost effective. There are lots of arguments why you should use water-based inks. So we're going to move on and talk about the main, um, the main chemistry, the main three inks that basically cover the biggest part of the prints that you will do from day-to-day -day basis. The first of all, we have the soft bases, which are just a ready-to-print ink, transparent, and they're just for printing on uh, light colored garments, but they give a very, very soft hand feel. So soft that really you can't distinguish between the print and the garment. The hand is, is exceptional. High solid bases were really um, developed to um, satisfy the PVC free demand of the retailers. And they print much more like a traditional plastisol would print. They have a little bit more hand feel than a general water-based, but they are opaque. You can print them on light or dark colored backgrounds, um, but these are the inks that we target towards the PVC-free demand that you're now seeing from people like Nike. And then we have the discharge bases. Um, discharge is a little bit more complicated in that you have to have the right garment to print on, it must be a dischargeable reactive dye. And the, the ink is all, is all combined together with um, an activating agent. And you, you print, and when it goes through the oven, it basically bleaches the background dye and replaces it with the color of the ink. It gives you a very, very soft handle and um, a really, really nice effect. So those are the three main inks that we're going to talk about 
in a little bit more detail. But Rob's going to take over now and just cover general water-based printing and the tips as to how to go about it. Thank you very much, Jeanette. And uh, everybody, before we move on, you know, you guys have just learned a little bit about uh, magnet colors and that dark source one, just some basic water-based 101. But we'd just like to learn a little bit about you. So Jeff is going to just pop up real quick a couple questions. And uh, I'd like you just to just take a, about 10 seconds, 15 seconds, and if you could just answer those, and we'd appreciate it. Jeff, can you verify? Everything's looking good. 91 people percent of voted. Oh. We're almost done. Give it another five seconds. All right. Now we're sharing our results. There you go, Rob. Okay, I can't see them. I can see them. 7% extremely experienced with water-based, 40% have printed some, 19%, oh sorry, some 40% in production, 19% have tested them. Okay, excellent. And that's about uh, what I what I would have expected. You know, one thing folks, and, and I think it's kind of, kind of uh, uh, you know, puts an explanation point on it. You know, Jeanette and I have had many conversations, and you know, most of the world is a, is a water-based world. There's tons of people with a lot of experience, and here in the United States, in particular, uh, it really is not. It's kind of some new grounds. Uh, we are a plastisol country, and uh, uh, and this these are is a new adventure. And so that's kind of the purpose of this is to be able to give you guys a. Uh, uh, a good introduction and maybe give you some help in getting started. So with that being said, let's go ahead and dive into some of these water-based tips. Um, the first one is unbelievably important. You know, we absolutely must use a water-resistant emulsion and full screen exposure is imperative. And as a matter of fact, even prior to exposure, you absolutely have to make certain that your screens are fully dry, uh, that there's no moisture. I mean, sometimes screens can feel dry to the touch, but um, if you have a humidity level that is, say, 60 to 70 percent RH, the fact is is that you probably still have water in there, and it's not going to completely cross link during exposure, and you're going to have you know less than a durable coating. You know, optimally, you want to have you know 45 percent uh, or less uh, in the in the room. You know, some heat, 100 degrees, and uh, some nice airflow to fully dry it out. You know, you can cheat a plastisol, right? We can we can underexpose an emulsion, and and yeah, we may get a few little pinholes, but with water base, it is absolutely imperative that we uh, we really make certain we're using the correct emulsions and that we have really nice procedures uh, pre-pressed to make certain that we're going to get the results out on press. Our containers, you absolutely want to keep your ink buckets sealed when not in use. Uh, many times, again, with Plastisol, you will keep buckets on your shelves in the ink department with no lids and short of getting dust and maybe you know dead flies uh, that would land in there. I guess they're alive when they land and then they would die eventually. Uh, you really don't have any problems. You don't have any problems with it drying out. But we certainly want to be able to keep uh, Air and you know moisture you know uh, out of that uh, that container and you seal them seal them solidly. Always a good practice to keep a spray bottle around the press just to help if you do have some drying in. Specifically, we're working on half tones and and things of that nature. If we're having uh, a little bit, if it's a uh, a very very dry day outside, it's going to certainly suck more moisture out of the screen. Just good practices. And many times in our environments, we you know have very hot print shops. Very few air conditioned environments. Occasionally you'll see one, but mostly not. And so you got a lot of fans, and you're moving air across the shop to keep your employees cool. You need to make sure we're not moving air across those ink screens, because again, that's going to help. Just as it is in your emulsion, in your screen to room, you want that, right? To dry the uh, emulsion coating. We don't want to dry the water-based coating. So we minimize that air movement across the screens. And for those of you with automatic presses, it's a little bit different. You always think of flooding and then printing. Well, here's just the opposite. You want to reverse that if your press allows you to, to print and then flood. We want to you know, decrease that flood bar pressure to really allow to put a nice coating of water base across that screen, and that'll absolutely help in your uh, screen life, or excuse me, your open time on your water base. Uh, squeegees and pressure is pretty, pretty normal. Uh, you know, kind of mid-pressure mid and, you know, medium soft squeegees, medium speed, 
really to gain the best uh, opacity and the uh, edge definition that we can. Um, the second, this next one here on registration, this is really critical, and I think this is an area we've seen a lot of people struggle with, is registration. And what I mean by that is registration time. Many times if we've got a really tough job of registering and it takes a lot, a lot of time, it's no big deal again with the plastisol. It never, ever air dries. But if we have our water base in that screen during this registration process, it's going to want to dry out. So we want to minimize the amount of ink that we have to avoid any potential. Once you get running, it's a wholly different animal. It's this whole part of just sitting you know, at, during the registration process. Obviously, as you're running, you're using the ink. So, um, And off contact is three, four millimeters. It's going to really give us a nice, uh, uh, you know, clear, crisp print. From a mesh count standpoint, you know, nothing real surprising here, but we do want to use for big vector areas, large solid areas, you know, uh, under basing if we're doing high solids. The 110 to 156 mesh screens are generally the recommended mesh counts. And just from a simple design setup, we have small print area to large, you know, just good practices. And always print that highlight white as the last screen. And, you know, if we're flashing, we definitely want to be able to leave an empty print head at the cool down station if we have the ability. Uh, the curing, now this again is, uh, is just as important as what we're talking about, the pre-press. You absolutely need to make sure that dryer is set to fully cure that ink and follow the time and the temperature on the technical data sheets. Um, you need to have time, you need to have temperature, and you need to have airflow. Whereas a plastisol is more of, I'll call it a mechanical fusion. You know, you just throw heat at it. It's a, a plastic, a liquid plastic that turns solid, if you will, and adheres. A water base needs to cross link. You need to exhaust the water out for it to fully cure. And, you know, some people see some of these recommendations and they, and they go, holy cow, I, you know, that's, that's a lot of time or temperature. The fact is, in fact, I did a little study looking at lots of about eight different brands of discharge and they're all very very similar you know the recommendations are going to be in that you know 320 to 340 range for three minutes basically you know with good airflow so that's really imperative um, make certain that those dryers are uh, adjusted um, and really uh, just as you would a plastisol I mean if you have it set for curing right now and you have 20 percent humidity and it's cold outside it's going to be a little different come June when it's you know 95 degrees and you've got the dock doors open and it's raining outside and you got 90 percent humidity in the air and all those cotton shirts are absorbing all that that water you must blow out you know exhaust out all that moisture before you uh, uh, to ensure that you're getting full cross link out of the water base one thing I wanted to point out, too, is on the product packaging. Uh, the Magnicolor pro products are all packaged by weight, that is by kilogram. And, of course, that's really, you know, a standard all over the world, uh, except really here in the United States. Uh, uh, but so many things sold by the volume. But it's important to understand this. Our standard pack sizes are 5K, 30K, and 120. And the reason why it's important to understand this is a lot of folks, you know, sell by the gallon. And I've heard many times somebody, oh, well, Holy cow, you know, brand X is, I can buy a, you know, one gallon pail of their stuff for this price. And, but yet, when you look at it, we're actually very economical, maybe less money, uh, because we got, it's 1.3 gallons is basically what a 5K package is. So just clearly put this up here just to understand that in a volume standpoint, we're packaging about one and a third, about eight gallons, about 32 gallons in our standard pack size. So let's go ahead and just get into what are the Magna Color product offerings. And I built this little chart. I kind of like it. Um, it, it. It basically is just a circle and, and it shows us all the core Magna products. And then, and without getting into all the details, we're going to dive into each of these a little bit. You know, you've got discharge bases. You've got for uh, print on dark goods. Of course, you've got the soft bases for whites and lights. We've got the high solids. You know, Jeanette covered all these and in, uh, in its uh, kind of 30,000 foot view. And then we've got the pigments, and they're the, called the eco pigments. And these same set of pigments are used in all the bases. There's 13 of these pigments that are included in the Magnamix software that work with all these bases. So they're all interrelated. So the line is called Magna Print. That is the, the trade name for the Magna Colors product offering. And as we just uh, described, that it was these, uh, uh, these four main categories that were on the previous slide. Uh, we also have 
a range of, and I have to say it, specialities because uh, that's, that's how we say it over in the UK, but even though I spelled it specialties here, we have an extensive range of specialities in water-based, and that is unique. Not everybody offers a lot of uh, uh, opportunities to do things other than flat inks. And of course, as you would expect, there is a full range of additives that are designed to you know, maximize the, uh, uh, the performance of the MagnaPrint ink. So we'll get into each of these, but that's a rough view, and I'm going to go ahead and, in fact, we're going to start, I guess, with the soft bases, and we'll turn it back over to Jeanette. Thank you, Rob. <clears throat> okay, so the soft bases, as we said previously, are for printing on white and light, light backgrounds. We actually have two soft bases, MagnaPrint FF, um, been one of our best-selling products for many years now and it's quite a simple product we tend to use it on more open areas and print on quite an open mesh count so from 110 to 200 it's a very versatile product it's a very very soft handle very bright shades and a really really good wash durability just recently because fashion has dictated that um, CMYK has become very important and people have demanded to do much more higher mesh counts, um, tonal work, four color process. We introduced a product called MagnaPrint ND Extra. ND stands for non-drying and this ink will not dry in the screen. Even on the very, very high mesh count, it says up to 305 on there but we've actually used it up to 350 with no drying in the screen. We always print it wet on wet, very, very soft hand, and a very excellent wash durability. Um, just to look in a bit more detail at ND Extra, uh, as I said before, it is a non-drying paste. It is possible to flood the screen, and you can leave it in for two to three hours. The screens will not dry. You return to the screen, you can resume printing, and after two to three strokes, the ink will clear itself and you, you'll have exactly the same print mark as you had before you left the screen. When we do test this ink, just to demonstrate the non-drying properties, we do flash it, we get it very, very hot, and we still leave it in the screen and it never, ever dries. But actually, we do recommend that you print this product wet on wet. It, the water-based inks don't tend to pick up on the back of the screen like um, a plastisole would. So we do recommend printing wet on wet. You don't need to use flash cures. So again, it's a cheaper um, alternative because you're saving energy. Um, you can print up to 350 mesh. As Rob said before, it's really, really important to flood the screen when you stop. But actually, it's really, really important that you get a very fl good flood on the screen while you're printing as well. Um, with ND Extra, you can use up to 6% of the MagnaPrint Eco pigments. That may sound not very much, but actually you won't need to use any more of that because the pigments are very, very highly concentrated. You will get very, very bright shades, a really soft hand feel. This product is amazing. The hand is just non-existent. Um, and you cure for two and a half minutes at 320 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, just to show you an example of some of the CMYK artwork that we've done, um, and also just to give you a little bit of detail on the separation, I'm sure you all know that um, for CMYK, the angle of separation for each of the colors is very important to give the build-up. Um, the angles that we use are shown on the screen. Um, the ND Extra is actually available as ready-to-print process colors as well, um, so we can even give you the information to dial in those the reflective data into your um, separation and so that it all work that when you're doing the separation it works out the exact amount that you need to put in each for each color. Um, we printed the sequences um, CYMK with an angle of 10 degrees on the squeegee and a 70 geometer squeegee with a medium print pressure. And I okay. I have to apologize for the uh, the, print, uh, the quality of the photograph. I took it with my iPhone off of a beautiful print. And you can't feel it. Maybe you can reach up and feel it on the screen and feel how soft it is, but uh, it certainly doesn't do any real justice. Okay, so moving on to the discharge. Um, discharge ULF stands for ultra low formaldehyde. We called it that because you can never be zero formaldehyde due to the background level in the air. 
It is a patented formaldehyde um, free discharge system um, and we do own the patent for the Americas and Europe. So it is a unique system to us. Um, when the difference between this and a standard discharge system is that when you print a garment, there will be no smell in the workplace. You won't get that very sort of strange fishy odor that you get with a normal formaldehyde system. And if you test the garment straight from the dryer, there will be less than seven parts per million formaldehyde on the garment. That means that even a baby could wear that and it wouldn't be harmful. Um, the specification for Nike baby wear is less than 20 ppm. So this system, straight from the dryer, meets that requirement. And it's very unusual because most uh, most systems for formaldehyde do generate, uh, sorry, for discharge do generate formaldehyde. So you've got no smell in the workplace and the garments can be worn immediately with no washing required. Um, the system, the discharge system that we produce is, is a little bit different to most that I've seen on the market in that we have three products in the range. We have a base which is essentially a clear base that we use for very, very bright, sort of full shades um, with like a 6% pigment concentration. The blending white, we would use it for lighter shades between 1 and 3% pigment concentration. And for things like flesh tones or um, pastel colors, the super white we just use as a white on its own. Um, to all the bases, we add 6% of the formaldehyde-free activator, which we call Activator M. I should point out that once you have activated the ink, you, the shelf life is only four to five hours. And that can vary dependent on the ambient temperature of where you're working and where you store the ink. So what we do recommend is that you make the ink, you add the color to the ink, but you only activate it prior to printing. Any unactivated ink can be stored, but once you've activated it, you've only got four to five hours. Again, you can use up to 6% of our eco pigments in the bases, um, and you'll get very, very good wash fastness. Um, the maximum mesh that we recommend for good printability with the discharge is up to 200. And again, just some, uh, just a, a print to show you the the discharge. It is on a, a black background. Um, the artwork was at 55 lines per inch with an elliptical dot at a 22.5 degree angle. And we actually printed this on uh, all screens on a 156 mesh. For the white, we used 100% super white. And for the, the red and the blue, we produced them with a mixture of the base and the blending white and using our pigments. The order of print was blue, red, and white. And then the reason that we print the white last is that the white is actually a highly filled um, white. If you print the white first, as most plastisol printers always want to print the white first as an underbase, if you print the white first in this case, you would need to flash. Flashing with discharge should be avoided because the discharge inks become very hot and start to change color in the screens. This can easily be solved by printing the white last. So print the blue, the red, and then the white, and then you do not need to use a flash cure during the print. OK, so we've got some other discharge products in the range. The Plus Charge um, is a hybrid system that you can use with Plastisol. Again, it uses the activator M, so it is for um, formaldehyde free. It can either be used as an underbase, so just the dish, just the plus charge on its own um, as an underbase, flash, and then print the plastisol on top. It gives a very very soft hand feel to the plastisol if you use it that way, or you can mix it together with a plastisol. Um, so take 50 parts of the plastisol, 50 parts of the plus charge base activate it and then print as you would a plastisol. Um, the good thing about the plas charge is that it does actually cure at regular plastisol speeds in the dryer. I always recommend this product for printers who are 
98% plastisol and want to get into water-based printing, it's a very, very good place to start because it gives you a little bit of experience of water-based but still gives you the runnability of a plastisol and gives you a very, very soft hand feel at the end. That's a great point, Jeanette. And just to add on to that, this is a fantastic way to get into discharge if you've never done it, uh, or if you just have, you know, electric dryers and don't and not have the ability to really throw a lot of uh, uh, airflow and, and and time at it. Uh, it is also important to note this will not take. This is not for use with pigment, the uh, Magna pig, Eco pigments. It has no binder and hold the pigments. It's strictly to use as an underbase or to use as a plastisol hybrid. That's right. Thanks, Rob. So coming on to the discharge ABAW, which is our conventional discharge system. So this uses zinc formaldehyde sulfoxalate as the activator. So this will be similar to anything at any other discharge products that you've probably or possibly seen on the market in America. We do recommend, recommend that garments printed with this system should be washed prior to wearing particularly if you have to achieve a formaldehyde level for a retailer RSL. We can't guarantee that just print and dry only, this product will give you less than 70 parts per million out of the end of the dryer, so we do always recommend that you wash. The formaldehyde systems do have some advantages in that they tend to work better on poor discharge garments because the formaldehyde is quite aggressive and gives a better discharge. Um, one reason that we, we hold this line, e even with the formaldehyde free discharge system, is that sometimes a, a garment buyer will specify that they want the garment to be washed after printing anyway as part of the look of the garment. So we would always recommend that you use the formaldehyde containing if the garment's going for washing for that reason, because it's, it's a little bit cheaper than the formaldehyde free, so it's more cost effective if the garment is undergoing a wash before being sold. Again, the products are a base, a blending white and a super white, so the two systems work in a very similar way. Um, but this time you just use 6% of our MagnaPrint Activator AB, which is a zinc formaldehyde sulfoxalate, as we've said. The shelf life for this is a little bit longer. You can get up to 12 hours after activation, particularly here in the UK where it tends to be very cold. If, it's, um, if the temperature is very high, it may reduce the shelf life, but in general you'll get a minimum of 8 to 12 hours out of the um, activated product. Again, you only need to use up to 6% of the eco pigments. You'll get very, very bright shades. Um, you won't need to use any more than that because, as I've said before, they are very, very strong. And again, up to 200 mesh for the discharge ABAW. Thank you, um, and I'm going to hand back to Rob now. Thank you very much. Let's talk briefly about uh, just some discharge tips. And uh, we've got a lot of information, folks, and I know I'm going to kind of run through it, but I just want to make sure we get through all of our information here. Um, I just want you to understand that sometimes there's a disconnect on how you order activator and how you order discharge. So this is just a brief little, you know, quick little table saying, you know what, if I've if I'm going to have you know a five kg package, one and a third gallons of zinc, I'm going to need about a third of a kilo of activator, you know, or two kilos for 30 uh, uh, kg. So it's just a quick quick little chart to help you in your purchasing decisions. Let's run through a couple of magna, uh, uh, discharge tips, and this is for you know uh, all discharges, but uh, specifically as we're talking about our magnaprint products, you know. But all 100% uh, cotton garments, they are not necessarily uh, dischargeable. They don't all use reactive dyes. You need to make certain they are dischargeable garments. You want to avoid garments that have been re-dyed. What is that? Those are you know a mill has an overrun in navy and they re-dye in black. Uh, bad news, won't work. Okay, and that does happen from time to time. We need to be certain that we're not getting re-dyes. There are certain colors that, even though uh, they are use reactive dyes, they generally just do not discharge well. And I'm going to give you a little hint here if you haven't seen one in a minute. Uh, but generally, the Royals, Kellys, Golds, Purples, but there are some more too, and I'm going to share that with you in just a second. But even among one color, you can have varying dischargeability across different dye lots. You know, all these. Uh, all these goods are done offshore and in and, and numerous countries and numerous manufacturing plants. So it is very, very important to test uh, 
every you know when the product comes comes in. Sometimes an easy way to do it is just take a little bit of neutral and activate it and see how it uh, how it how it discharges. What kind of neutral shade that you're getting? Uh, if you don't want to ruin a garment, you can take just a tiny bit and put it on the inside of a hem, for instance, and uh, and see what happens. Um, but the discharge will occur you know, will occur once that water is evacuated. And it is important to understand that uh, discharge ink colors will vary across different colored garments. If I were to say do a try and do a, a Coca-Cola red, for instance, across all these colors of garments on the screen, chances are it's going to vary because of the dischargeability of the shirts. We want to make certain that that activator is fully dissolved into the uh, discharge ink. So let's stir it in. Let's wait 10 minutes and then uh, re-stir. And you know what? Right before prior to printing, we're just going to gently remix the ink. Um, you know, the discharge must penetrate the fabric in order to really get our brightest discharge and our softest hand. Uh, we want to blow out as much dye on that thread as we can, just not the surface. Uh, and as Jeanette said earlier, we're best to go wet on wet, uh, not throw a lot of heat to the inks that are in the screen with a flash unit. Same print size area uh, sequence we talked about before. Always best to go small to large and, and print that print white last. Uh, and it generally is recommended around 330, 340 degrees airflow for three minutes uh, to fully cure that discharge. So what do we do if a garment is not a good dischargeable dye color? And this is an example on the screen if you can see it. It's kind of a uh, you know light Columbia type of blue shirt. But what we'll do then is we'll print the magnet print uh, blending white as an underbase. It has some opacity without being harsh. So if you look on the screen, if you can see it okay, on the left side is just the straight neutral uh, ULF formaldehyde-free base activated by itself, and that's how it discharges. You can see it really doesn't do a really great job on that color shirt. And I wouldn't expect it to, but look what we did with the white. Just taking the blending white, not the super white, the blending white, put it down first, and we can get a pretty nice, soft, nice, soft feeling, uh, uh, nice uh, underbase, if you will. We're going to flash that dry to the touch. Now, we're not going to use discharge on top. We're going to take some of those soft bases that, that Jeanette described to you, either the FF or the ND extra, depending on your artwork, and uh, we're going to go right on top of that. And we're going to get beautiful, soft hand, and now completely have a PVC-free solution, even on a, a shirt that is not a good dischargeable shirt. So how do I know what's a good dischargeable shirt or not? I don't know if how many of you have seen this chart. Gildan published it. Uh, I keep it. I keep it as a reference. I keep it on my iPad to show to people. I have not seen one of these from any other mill. I've only seen it from Gildan. And if you look at it, it's it's perfect. It's a rating chart for discharge uh, dischargeability. They rank all the colors that are A's are are ideal for discharge. B are acceptable, as they call it, and C is not recommended. And if you look at some of those colors, like you know, I'm not surprised. Carolina blue. You know, the daisy. Uh, you know, the the purple color just as we described. So this is something you can use as a heck of a reference tool and to share with your customers too when they don't understand it. Um, the link is at the bottom, and I know it's a huge uh, uh, eye chart there, but basically if you just Google Gildan Discharge Rating Chart, you will find it at one of their wholesalers uh, or perhaps on their website too. The first one that came up to me was this uh, Imprints Wholesale Company out of Kansas City. So I encourage you to get it. Uh, I assure you most all the manufacturers would be uh, uh, about the same. So uh, with that being said, Jeanette, I'm going to turn it back over to you to bring us home with the high solids. Thanks, Rob. Okay, so we talked a little bit about the high solids. Um, it's um, a system that you can print on light or dark backgrounds. It's much more similar to a plastisol in the way that we print it, in that we do print um, a white underbase first, and then we print the colors on top. We have two different systems for our high solids range, Advanced Print TDB and Aquaplas FS. The advanced print is a, a non-drying formulation, and we recommend that for high mesh counts and tonal printing. Uh, the Aquaplaz FF is a uh, higher opacity, and we would use that for vector art, more open areas. So you can see on the screen that there are sort of differences between the two. The advanced print TDB um, runs very well. It doesn't dry. The Aquaplaz, if you were to use the Aquaplaz FF on a higher mesh count, like the advanced print, then you would start to see some drying in the screen. Um, 
the Aquapaz has a very, very good flash performance, so we would tend to use that you know, as an underbase for big logo areas, um, but there is a demand for you know, a lot of tonal work, so that's why we developed the Advanced Print TDB uh, to complement the Aquapaz FF range. Um, so on dark garments, we would use Aquapaz as the underbase, and then if we were going to do tonal work on top, we would use the Advanced Print for the colors on top. The two products are intermixable, so if you need to increase your open time with Aquaplaz FF, you can just use Advanced Print as the extender um, to keep the screen open for longer. Printing high solids, it's water-based, and one of the things that always amazes people is that we recommend that you preheat the pallets to 160 degrees Fahrenheit before you start to run. There are a lot of reasons for that. It helps to helps for the ink to release from the screen so that we don't have to use quite so many flash cures. It also helps with the flash cure because a nice hot palette just helps us to reduce the time that we need to get the ink touch dry. So we do recommend that you preheat the palettes. It, it makes a significant difference to the runnability of these inks. Always important with water base, flood the screen during stop. And again, while you're running, you are looking for a good flood coat of the screen as well. These um, both products, Aquaplaz and Advanced Print, you can use up to 12% of the MagnaPrint Eco pigments. The reason we need to use more here is that they are an opaque system, so we're using white to give opacity, so we need more pigment to give the, the shades that we want to achieve. However, the wash fasteners won't be affected. These products can accept 12% pigment, no problem. The wash fasteners will be perfect. Again, with water-based inks, you need to cure for a slightly longer time, so two to two and a half minutes at 330 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, as I said before, you can mix both of the systems together. and We have found that if you use the Aquaplaz White FF at 70 parts, and add 30 parts of the advanced print white, you get a fantastically smooth underbase, very good opacity um, if you print on a 110 to a 156 mesh. Rob's going to talk a little bit more about the Magnamix software um, as we go on, but just to mention our software is basically a, a Pantone system, and when you put your Pantone number in and select a high solids recipe, the software will select a mixture of Aquaplaz White and the Advanced Print TDB Neutral. So it gives you the correct opacity of the shade that you're trying to achieve, but also maintains good runnability in the screen, because you've got a good combination of both properties of both systems. If you're printing a very solid area, you may require a flash after each um, color. But in general, if you're printing tonal work, we tend to use a flash after every two to three. Um, colors, but it really depends on, on the design that you're going to print. Um, and as I said before, to increase the open time of Aquaplaz range, we just add the Advanced Print TDB. Although it is a fully formulated ink, it does work like a retarder. So if you look at the Tiger, he was printed with our um, Advanced Print TDB system. Uh, we, the, aquapla, the, the base was a mixture of the Aquaplaz and the Advanced Print White to give a good opacity. We then printed the colors wet on wet, um, and then we did the highlight white last. OK, Rob. <coughs> um, we have another product in our um, high solids range called Ultra Stretch. This is really um, an ink for very stretchy garments. So anything that contains lycra, we tend to use the ultra stretch on. Um, it's a fabulous ink, very, very soft hand, and um, it's actually based on polyurethane, uh, whereas the other high solids inks are high solids acrylics. Um, it has really good opacity and coverage, really soft and stretchy, and very, very good wash fastness. You can actually use this as a stretch additive as well. So if you wanted to give a little bit more stretch to the high solids, the advanced print, or the aquaplas, you could add the ultra stretch. So all three of those systems can be intermixed together. Again, the ultra stretch is available as a white and a neutral base. 
you can add up to 6% eco pigment um, and it needs to be printed up to a 110 mesh. If you are printing on a very, very stretchy garment, then we would recommend that you print flash print so you get some layers down to give more elasticity to the product. Um, but it's a fantastic product to achieve very, very good stretch. Thank you, Jeanette. And all before we move on, we just got one last set of questions we want to ask you. So if we go ahead and uh, take 30 seconds and uh, get this done, we'd appreciate it. All right, half of our attendees have voted. We'll give it another 10 or 15 seconds. Another five seconds if a couple more people want to chime in. Looks like we got one or two more answers coming in. Right. Here you go, Rob. Okay. I don't know why I can't see it on my screen, Jeff. Can you read, uh, read okay. it out? Looks like 78% have used soft base or are interested in soft base. 65% uh, are interested in high solid bases. 32% uh, are interested in conventional ABAW discharge. And 54% 54, 54 interested in formaldehyde-free ULF ultra discharge. Very good. That's interesting. That's uh, uh, I, I, always always good to hear what folks are interested in. And I'm a little surprised, uh, uh, but I'm actually very pleasantly pleased because that soft base is just such a great product, and the numbers there that you're interested in are uh, uh, pretty high. So I'm very pleased with that. So, hey, I know we're uh, starting to run up on the hour, and I've got a few more slides to go through, and I'm going to run through them pretty quick, and hopefully we'll just that we can have some time to uh, answer the questions. Uh, we talked about the eco pigments. We've already said that they're uh, they go in all the bases. I do want to point out they're very strong, and that's why the lo the loading is lo is uh, so much lower. Uh, Jeanette has shared with me some you know competitive analysis, and we're significantly stronger than most all of the other competitors out there, and that allows you to use less and gain be uh, better color strength. There's only 13 of these pigments that are used in the Magnamix system. So when you pull up a recipe of their software, they, these are the colors. The one that's not shown is the violet, uh, but it's 13 colors. Uh, of course, if you need to make fluorescence, you would need, we do have fluorescence, but there is not part of the normal process of color matching to hit the Pantone shades. So you may be asking yourself, well, how, if I want to take a look at it, how do I get into it? And we've come up with a pretty simple way for you to do so. We've created a little kit, okay, called the Magna Kit, that is four ounce bottles of each of the 13 pigments. And basically, we charge you know just under 100 bucks for that. But when you get the get the little kit, you get you can pick out a five kilogram, uh, you know, 1.3 gallon pail of the base of your choice. It's a great way to get into uh, the system, and you can actually keep the little bottles and use them to refill, and they're they're super to uh, to work with on a small scale anyway. I do want to point out that the uh, activator is not uh, included with the discharge, just in all transparency. There's a couple of reasons for that. Uh, one, because of the, the uh, with the formaldehyde free, because that we can't ship a small quantity on UPS. It would be very freight uh, prohibitive. Uh, and so, but any of the other bases, everything is good to go. But with the discharge, we still need to arrange to use an activator. Let's talk briefly about specialities, and I'm going to just show these real quick, a couple of them. Uh, we're going to go into more details about these in next month's webinar, uh, and so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on them. But the main thing I want you to understand is that there's a lot of different specialties that are available in the Magna line. Uh, all types of, you know, the suede foam is beautiful. It uh, gives you a really, really nice suede appearance, very easy to print. You know, they've got two different puffs. Uh, one's more of a traditional, I'd say, you know, the pop popcorn effect, as the other one uh, is more of a rubbery uh, uh, feel. There's different binders. You know, if you want to do flocking, or if you want to use a uh, a binder for foil, you want to be have a PVC free foil adhesive. Well, we have one. Uh, there's burnout. If you're familiar with burnout, and of course, pearlescence and and binders to hold glitters and and metallics. Uh, the glitter AP, uh, which AP basically 
stands for add pigment, if you will. It's just a, a finished glitter, and we can tint these with the eco pigment. Similar if you've ever done that using a uh, plastic salt in a, in a similar fashion. And two products that are very kind of very interesting is the crackle products. Now the crackle which you actually physically do by hand. You, if you're familiar with that, they have like uh, you know products called brittle or uh, uh, other names that are in the plastisol market in the same way. But there's also a self crack. It's a uh, basically a two part system, if you will, with an under base and then an overprint that physically cracks in the dryer. Very very cool. Um, as we discussed earlier, there's a, a wider range of additives for MagnaPrint for use, and a couple of the real popular ones, of course, are retardant gel is going to certainly increase your open time in the screen. The negative of that, of course, would be that you know anytime you're retarding the drying, you're going to need more time to dry it, right? When you cure it, that makes sense. So you know, nothing's a magic bullet. You got to find that balance. The Crosslinker 100 is an excellent way for those that don't have the ability to uh, fully exhaust out the water, fully cure it. It helps you to, uh, use the word, cheat the system, if you will, and will uh, reduce the cure time and temperature needed for any of the magnet bases. Um, softeners and, and, and uh, penetrants and you know, thickeners, anything that people that would really want to be, you know, dive into water base in a major way, you've got all of the additives there to basically give you the uh, formulation strength that you need uh, uh, to be, be successful with that. So with that, that ends the presentation. And uh, we certainly appreciate all your time today. I know we're pushing up on the hour here in about two minutes. Uh, but Jeff, is there uh, some questions that we have come in that perhaps we can throw over to Jeanette? Yeah, actually we do. We have several questions. Um, I'm going to start with a real easy one that's got a quick answer. Uh, they're wanting to know if the software is free. Uh, the software yes, is free. <laughs> it is. And you know what? Um, I It didn't show up, or maybe I blew right by it. I, I had a slide for the Magnamix software, and I don't know if I blew by it. But if you go, it is a free download. If you go to Source One Online, we link right to Magna's website. And it's actually right on our front page, uh, SourceOneOnline.com. And you'll see a link right there on our front page to Magna where you can download that software. Excellent. Um, we had a question. Are there any tips on how to set up registration faster without the drying the discharge in the screen? Um, that's a difficult one. How to set up registration faster. Obviously, it depends on what kind of design that you are trying to register. Um, but basically, the thing that will help the most is that you give the screen a good flood while you're um, registering. Um, I've never seen the discharge dry in the screen, but you know I'm sure it could happen. In your weather can be a lot warmer than ours. Um, but basically, you know, the main tip is that whatever ink you have in the screen, make sure you've got sufficient to flood the image area. Um, so, and that should help you while you're setting up. Uh, Matthew replied that uh, line up your screen. Oh, it's, it's moving on. Line up your first screen. Print registration marks with a small squeegee. Line up the screens to that. Um, I'm sorry, Jeff. I couldn't. Go ahead, Jeanette. I couldn't. I didn't catch what you said. Sorry. Oh, okay. Uh, Matthew, one of our attendees, says to line up your first screen and print the registration marks with a small squeegee. Does that make sense? Does that sound like a good solution to that? Um, it sounds like a, a good solution, yes. But I, I'm not. I, I'm not sure I fully understood what you said. But maybe we should go on. <laughs> okay, we'll do that. Um, what would one do if the ink starts to foam? The ink starts to what? Sorry. Start starts to foam. Foam. Oh. Foam. F O A. Jeff, I'm, I'm Jeff you're, you're coming in a little fuzzy, Jeff. I don't know why. It's kind of hard to pick up here. Okay, sorry about that. Let me try to get a little closer to the microphone. What would one do if the ink starts to foam? Foam. Uh -huh. I've never seen the ink foam. Um, the own. I had one time somebody tell me the ink foamed, and the only reason that it foamed was because it was a discharging 
it had been stored in a very hot area and when they added the activator to the ink, the ink was already very hot. So it's very important that you keep the ink in a cool area. Don't allow the inks to get hot um, because what had happened was this ink had got so warm uh, because it had been basically left outside in the sunshine um, that once we added the activator to it, it immediately started the discharge reaction because the ink was so warm and that's when it, the ink starts to foam. So it's actually just a storage and temperature problem. It, it's just that it's starting the discharge off very, very quickly. Okay. Our next question is, can class charge be used with the Roblox PC system? Um, class charge um, works extremely well with um, the Wilflex Epic system. Okay. Well, and let's make certain we understand that with as long as you're adding it to a, a finished Wilflex ink, you cannot take a Wilflex pigment concentrate and add it to any of the water bases. Completely co incompatible. But if you're asking if I made a color using the Wilflex PC system, could I then use splash charge? The answer is yes. The only, th the only thing that you need to be cautious about uh, certain colors, and uh, Jeanette helped me out, I think some reds that could potentially, you could look at, uh, if they didn't, didn't use the uh, you know, non-migrating red pigments, that you could bleach them out, uh, if you will, in the process. That's right. Some of the um, colors may not be stable to the activator that we use in the plasma charge, and it tends to be the reds. Um, if there is um, a non-migrating alternative, then they tend to have better stability to the discharge. Okay. Uh, someone would like to confirm that they should mix by weight and not by volume. Is this correct? Yes, that's right. Okay. So mix by weight, not by volume. Uh, our yeah, next that's, Go ahead, that's Jeff. That, and, that, and the reason that's important, I mean, is because you know, everything, if everything weighed the same, it all had the same specific gravity, you could weigh by volume all day long. But the fact is it doesn't. So you're trying to figure out, you know, I, and I would suggest that with any ink system you're using, not, you know, not just water base, you're adding a reducer to a plasma saw, you need to weigh it and not, do it, not use a glove method. You know, it's going to be the most uh, uh, effective way to use this system. Okay. Uh, our next question. Is there a mixing system for standard and PMS colors in the flash charge line? No, because we don't make the plastisol, so you would have to use the mixing system from the plastisol manufacturer. So what I would what I would suggest, I mean, obviously, say you're using a Wilflex system or you know a Rutland or whomever, you know, you're making a Pantone color. You can make the plast charge in with it, but bear in mind you're diluting it, right? You're t doing a 50/50 blend. Uh, you could you know experiment and potentially with some other blends, but chances are, anytime you dilute something, it's not going to be just a dead-on Pantone match. I would suggest this. If you're going on a very good dischargeable garment, i.e., say a, a black or, or you know a, a chocolate brown, run plash charge by itself as an underbase, and run your, you know, if you want to use your plastisol colors, that's fine. Fine mesh counts. You may want to add some fascia soft or something to soften them up and go right on top. Lots of people do that with very good results. Now you're basically having, you know, of course, if you want a fully aqueous non-PVC solution, you use the MagnaPrint uh, uh, soft bases. But if you want to use Plastisol, absolutely. It works all day. Great. We have a customer who is using a Matsui PC system, and he wants to know if he can use the ND Extra base with the Matsui PC, PC system. Um, well, he can, but we'd rather he didn't because um, our uh, pigments are stronger than the Matsui pigments and uh, it would be difficult to say whether the, he would achieve the same fastness levels if he added more pigment concentrate to them. Um, obviously our, our systems, the binding capacity of our bases is based on the maximum amount of pigment that you would need to add when you use our pigments. Now 
for instance, I've come across other pigment systems, not necessarily the one we're talking about, but other competitive pigment systems where people have been using up to 30% of pigment. Now, in our system, we only use 6%. So the dilution factor when you're adding 30% pigment as opposed to 6% is quite significant. So we couldn't guarantee that you would get the same performance if you chose to use somebody else's pigment concentrates in our system. Although theoretically, of course, you should be able to do that. Just understand, and, and this is with, again with any chemistry, when you mix and match manufacturers, just make sure you do your testing. I mean, not a single manufacturer is going to test their materials with a competitive uh, material and, and offer, you know, say this can and cannot be done. But uh, the fact remains is lots of people do their own uh, field chemistry, if you will. So, you know, if there's one thing I say is test and then test some more. And if you're satisfied that it meets your needs and, and passes your wash test, then you're good to go. Okay. Uh, question. Can an IR dryer work if there's enough airflow? Um, yes, um, they will work. I mean, more importantly is probably the dwell time as well as the airflow. Um, in my experience, IR dryers tend to be quite short, so you may struggle um, to get a full cure because you don't have enough dwell time. But they do work. I mean, you know, we've we've converted a lot of customers over from plastisol printing, and IR dryers have been widely used. But you know, eventually, if you want to get up to very high productivity levels with water base, then you're going to need to look at investing in a, in a gas dryer, really. And probably what you want to do is, you know, again, do some test prints. I, I say that till I'm blue in the face. But document what you're doing. Use a sharpie so you can write on the fabric or however you want to do it, and then. You go and you go to your wash fastness test, and you throw them in the wash and, and dry cycle, and see what uh, uh, you know how it holds up, and, and you can basically answer your own question. Do remember with discharge, you can have full discharge without having full crosslinking. In other words, you can discharge the product and have good color development and still fail wash fast net testing. So you got to make certain that you're you're really you know fusing these inks. Great. Our next question, does it affect the water-based print if the garment is silicone washed before printing with water-based inks? Um, it certainly can do. If, if there is um, a, quite a layer of silicone on the fabric, um, it can make the fabric waterproof. So um, then the water-based ink cannot actually get to the fabric and it's adhering to the silicone layer rather than the fabric itself. So yes, it can affect the fastness. However, we do have additives that you can add to the ink if you are printing on a particularly waterproof fabric. Um, so you know we can overcome that pro that problem. But again, you know if you know that you've got a silicone washed fabric, it's a very simple thing to test if it's made it waterproof or not because not all silicone washes make the garment waterproof. But just by simply dropping a little bit of water onto the garment, if it absorbs into the garment, it will be fine to print with water base. If it, the water beads on the garment, then you may struggle. And it would be prudent at that stage to add um, our product, which is called Hydrofill, which is a wetting agent that helps you penetrate the ink through the silicone layer. OK. Um, somebody wanted to confirm that the cure time was three minutes, and was the three-minute cure time for basic water-based inks, or were you speaking about discharge inks? Um, three minutes is really a general recommendation, and the three-minute cure time is um, based on, um, I'm going to say, a, a degree centigrade temperature now. Rob, you might have to help me out here. Um, what's 150 degrees centigrade in Fahrenheit? I think that's I think that's just below 320. I'd have to convert it. I think I think it's almost double 160 to 320. But uh, okay. Um, so really, uh, if you increase the temperature of the oven, you can reduce the dwell time. Um, 
so you you could if you increase the temperature to three 350 or 360 then you could reduce the dwell time to two minutes so the three minute cure cure time is like a general recommendation but I think that Rob said before that you know when you are curing a water-based it's not as simple as fusing a plastisol the first thing that you have to do is evaporate the water from the ink so that's the first process and the curing isn't going to actually start until the water has evaporated so that is why you require more time because first of all you've got to evaporate the moisture and then only then does the ink actually start to cure. Rob, any follow up and on Jeff, that? I know we've gone over our, I beg your pardon? Um, we still have a number of people here. Uh, would you like to continue on answering questions or shall we? Uh, I, I'm, I'm good to continue. I just wanted to make certain that we weren't losing, losing the crowd. No, the, um, let's keep on going. Uh, next question. Yeah. How much ultra stretch product can be added to other products as a stretch additive? Um, basically, you can add as much as you like. Um, I would start off with a minimum of, say, 20% um, um, to give you some stretch to, you know, to well, to increase the stretch because the advanced print and the Equipass are both quite stretchy. But if you need more stretch, then you can add say 20%, but you can intermix those three systems in any ratio at all. Thank you, Jeanette. Our next question is, I have been using on contact with water base. Do you remember, recommend off contact? We do recommend off contact. And um, the reason that we recommend off contact is that if you, if you print on contact, you don't necessarily allow the ink to come out of the mesh. And you may find that you start to get screen blockaging, blockage because the ink's just not clearing the mesh. It's not going through onto the fabric. So we always recommend two to three millimeters off contact. The ink should then clean the mesh very nicely, go into the fabric, and you'll see improved runnability and you won't get blocking of the screen. Excellent. Our next question wants to confirm that plastic plasti charge contains formaldehyde. Is this correct? No, that isn't correct. Plastic charge is actually one of our competitors' brand names, which does contain formaldehyde. Our product is called Plas Charge, so um, slight difference in the naming, but ours is formaldehyde free because it uses the activator M which is the same activator that is used in our formaldehyde-free discharge system. Yeah, that's a great point, Jeanette. And, and the other product, Plastic Charge, is a ZFS product. Now, I would like to point out, if you want to use Plastic Charge and you don't care about being non-formaldehyde, you can use a standard ZFS activator in it just fine. So lots of people do that. works just fine. But using the Activator M, it is very unique because it's the only product on the market that is a formaldehyde free. Excellent. Good stuff. Our next question, what emulsion has been tested and is there one that's recommended? Is there different emulsions for all bases or a different emulsion for high solids versus discharge? You know what, Jeanette, I'll take this one. Um, we've actually done some work internally at Source One, uh, and you know we represent lots of different emulsion companies, and uh, we're putting together a, uh, a guide, if you will, of recommendations from a number of different manufacturers, Kiwo, Ilana, McDermott, uh, CCI. Uh, but uh, I can certainly you know, make this available, and I guess Jeff will figure out how to you know, post that or whatever uh, recommendations. But again, you definitely want to use a water resist emulsion. But what we're recommending in some cases, for instance, I'll just pick one. The Kilo HWR dual cure um, is a you know a recommended water-based emulsion. And what we're doing is breaking things down by, you know, I'd say less than three thousand piece runs. These are like on automatics, if you will, and greater than three thousand, kind of you know, short slash mid runs versus long runs. And you know, we recommend on a longer run to sometimes add a hardener to that because what happens is some water bases 
you know, are not fully 100% aqueous, there are maybe some ingredients in there that kind of act like, I'd say, co-solvents, if you will, that will actually start to break down the emulsion a bit. So, you know, on long runs, many times it's advantageous to run some hardeners. But we've, uh, some of our internal folks have done a lot of work on this, and we'll be kind of publishing a guide, uh, kind of a pre-press guide, if you will, about, you know, just proper procedures and recommendations and things of that nature. Great. Only two more questions, guys. Uh, can you use the additive hydrofill with the flash charge system? Um, the additives that we make are compatible with all the products that we make. So basically you can use any of them with any of our bases. Okay. Um, we have somebody who would like to know how, to, how they can order the starter kit. Rob will have to answer that one. You mean you don't want to, you don't want to take an order over there in the UK, Jeanette? And <laughs> the uh, actually so it we, might do take the, a we do bit time. <laughs> we do we 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 make the, we pour down and make the starter kits uh, here in our Chicago location. Uh, if you're a Source One customer, you just order with that part number that uh, was provided uh, on the. It's called Magna Kit. Uh, if uh, we also, you know, if you're outside of our sales range, we do have some uh, relationships with some other distributors, uh, Graphic Solutions, Midwest Sign. Um, but just uh, contact a Source One customer service, and they ought to be able to help you out. One last question: Are there any um, suggestions you can give on cleaning the screens, blowing out the emulsion? Hello. Hello, did you guys get that? I'm sorry. The sorry last... I didn't hear you then. It, it just cut off, but I can hear you again now. Okay. One more question. Uh, regarding cleaning the screens, are there any suggestions on how to get the emulsion out of the screens? Emulsion or ink? Um, well, I'll read it verbatim. And cleaning the screens, blowing out the emulsion. So it sounds like... Uh, is there some kind of? Uh... It, sound, it's, it sounds like if if the, when cleaning the screen with water and the emulsion is breaking down, then it's one of two problems. One, either the emulsion isn't suitable for water-based inks, or two, it hasn't been hardened. Okay, Rob, any follow-up to that? No, that's good. Is that the last question? That's the last question. Well, folks, you know, on behalf of Jeanette, uh, I really want to thank you for taking the time. I know we went over our allotted time, and to me that's, uh, that's awesome that most everybody wants to stick around and, and have some discussions. We at Source One are extremely excited about our relationship with Magda and the products and the services that they bring to us and that we in turn can bring to you. Without a doubt, if there is, uh, you know, what we have is an entire solution for you, and and with the Magna products, we can absolutely encompass that. So, you know, whatever your needs are, uh, we're here to help, and we're here to educate, and uh, uh, we certainly appreciate the opportunity to earn your business. And thank you very much for listening in today. We are doing a follow-up webinar in a month. I think uh, most of you probably are aware of that, and some email blasts and so forth that have been coming out. Uh, it'll be uh, probably keying in more on some specialties and ways to maybe help incorporate water base to help really improve your business. Uh, and, you know, of course, we're giving away a, a, route, a drawing there to the uh, uh, trip for two to FESPA in London. Uh, and I think probably most of you are registered on that, and that certainly is going to be exciting. So feel free to contact your friendly neighborhood Source One sales rep or customer service rep for any uh, information that you may need. And once again, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Jeanette. Thank you, everybody, for attending our webinar. We look forward to seeing you out there uh, in your shops.